Hello, welcome to Vlogmas Day 5. First of all, I am really sorry about the reflection of my glasses. There is nothing I can do about it unless I'm just in complete shadow. Um, second of all, I'll give you a very quick update on what I've done today. Basically, it's been a work day, editing yesterday's vlog, replying to emails. I had an online interview with another vlog, which I'll let you know more about when that's up. Oh, and I dyed my hair. The roots were looking a bit bad, so time to do that. Get that done before Christmas then, because also I wanted it to look quite nice for the concert. I'm doing a choir concert tomorrow and yeah, dress rehearsal later tonight. So this video is going to not be a normal whole day vlog. I just thought I would talk to you about how I organise my Christmas with bullet journals, sort of, and notebooks. I say bullet journal because it's a similar sort of thing, but really it's just notebooks. This is what I've got. These four notebooks begin with this one, Christmas 2005. I can't remember if I had a Christmas notebook before that or whether I just used my general life notebook, but um, that's what I could find right now. And actually the system in it hasn't changed very much. So every year I have a similar thing going on. I'll show you an old one because I don't want to give any present secrets away. So usually some point in sort of October, November, I'll just write a page of presents that I've bought through the year. I've got quite a lot of people to buy for and we do like spoiling our family with presents and we just can't afford to do that all in one go in one month so I do spread the present buying throughout the year if I see something that I think someone will like I'll just get it regardless of what time of year it is so I build up a box or at the moment a cupboard actually of presents that get emptied every December so first of all I'll start with just a list of those so I keep track of them but then towards December I will start doing an actual plan for each person to buy for so okay here's an example it's not I'm not gonna be able to show these very well my handwriting is quite small and the lighting is not great so I'll just sort of point and hopefully you'll get a, the gist of how I do things and hopefully this will help you if you want to get organized or you want to start a Christmas notebook anyway I thought I'd just share what I do it might be helpful or it might just be interesting particularly if you are a bullet journaler or just like filling in notebooks like I do. <laughs> I've got a two page spread for each of our daughters. Ideas on this side, what we've actually bought on this side. And then I do a line here and I've got a G which represents for got and W for wrapped. I've got my ideas. I tick them when I've got them and tick them when I wrap them. I've had times in the past I cannot remember whether I've wrapped it or not and I've had to undo the undo the cellar tape and try and peek inside without uh, boiling the wrapping. So if I've ticked it I know I've wrapped it and it's there in the pile under the tree or wherever I'm hiding it. And so on the other side I've just got the list of things we've bought and then just a column for wrap. There's the same for our other daughter. And then I do one for my side of the family. And this time I split everything up on each page. So I've got ideas, this column, two little columns for gotten wrap, a column for bought, and then another column for wrap. And another thing, since doing quite a lot of my Christmas shopping online, I now do in the got column I'll do a little O if I've ordered it and then I do a tick when I received it because obviously some things, not so much lately these days but in the early days of online shopping things used to go missing quite regularly particularly from Amazon and often if you order from catalogues then you get a notice that the item was out of stock. If you've already ticked the got then it throws you off completely so little O for order and a tick when it actually comes through the door. Yeah, I do a little note of who on my side of the family, parent, sister, brother-in-law. Also, I do a little both section because I do joint presents sometimes for my parents and my sister and her husband. So they get a little both section as well. Nieces, nephews, uncle, aunt, cousins, cousins, children over here. And then Chris's side of the family, which is very similar. Parents, both sister, brother-in-law both, and nieces and nephews on, on that side, and then to come off with it all wrapped up. And then I have a page for Chris, and um, 
and a page for and if the kids have written a note to Father Christmas then I write a list of those things as well just to make sure I don't buy the same thing as Father Christmas's elves might get. That helps to get organised and that really helps me out and I take the notebook with me when I go Christmas shopping because often what happens is I've totally forgotten particularly like I said if I bought it back in July that really helps for me to keep track on who still needs a present and who who's already sorted. So that's the present. Other lists I've got are if I'm hosting Christmas, which I do every other year, if I'm doing that, then I will have more pages planning all the menus and I make notes of, of where to find the recipes as well, which book, which page of which book, because when everyone's here, it's a mad rush to get everything ready all the time. At the same time, as I plan the menus, I do the shopping list. So there's a page for the shopping list and planning the meals really helps in me not dithering, oh gosh, what shall I do for lunch? What shall I do for lunch? If it's all there on the page, sort it. And also actually it helps me if I do a, a rough schedule of what to do each day as well when people are staying here. So I'll have just ideas of if there's somewhere that they might like to go or a note of what films I think they might like to watch that we've got, all that sort of thing. If I've got it written in the notebook, then again, I'm not thinking like if, the, if I'm in the kitchen cooking dinner, which I usually am, and everyone else is like a little bit bored, I can look at my notebook and think, oh, you might like to see this or, oh, we'll get a game of Jenga on the go or something like that. My headspace does get a bit chaotic at Christmas so if it's written down that really helps me out. What else? Oh and then I also write lists of what we were actually given for Christmas. I do appreciate our Christmas presents that we're given and, and I hate to forget who's bought us what. It just feels really ungrateful but in the rush of Christmas when you're unwrapping things it can be quite easy to just not remember what came from who. So, so before I forget on the day I've opened the presents I will get out my notebook and write a little list of who gave us what so that if there's a point in the future I've got something I think oh who gave me that set of pyjamas I can look it up and find out and it's oh that was nice of them that sort of thing I don't know it's just nice to have a little record it's also very useful for writing thank you letters particularly when the kids were younger it was useful to have that list <laughs> okay and then throughout Christmas I have pages where I just write like here I've got notes for future years so this can range from anything like here's some examples <laughs> Making mince pies takes an entire day and your feet hurt like hell and you're exhausted at the end of it. And it's just that, I've just written that note to remind myself, allow a whole day and a day after to get over it as well. Don't plan to do that in the morning and then go to a Christmas fair in the afternoon, it's just not gonna happen. And wash sheets several days in advance because the dryer doesn't get them completely dry and I end up having to hang them over the ray burn one at a time. Just notes like that, not to, I need to remember and these sorts of notes uh, are so it's so useful and so funny I've just looked back at some of the ones in here I've got things like in this one from 2005 like so so some of my notes in 2005 were don't do pressed greenery for handmade cards again it took bloody ages to press ages to glue and the ivy went very brittle <laughs> If I do tissue paper, glue it with Pritt stick, not PVA glue. And then I've written an idea for next year's handmade card. It's really nice to have this little record of things. Oh my gosh, the kids had a lot of presents that year. Back then, I also made a note of where our Christmas tree lights came from. So I knew where to go, whether it was B&Q, Woolworths, home base. So I knew where to go to get spare bulbs because that was back in the day where you got spare bulbs for your Christmas lights. Things to remember next year, it really underlined, does take longer to decorate than you expect and you do get sick of the suitcase hanging around while you dither on how to do decorations. Study all the photographs of decorations this year and work out exactly where everything is going before it comes down from the roof. <laughs> Anyway, oh, I, I'm reminiscing now. I must rein this in. Uh, one last note. All these notebooks, particularly the notes that I make throughout Christmas, things to remember for the following year. Things that are going to be relevant for every year. I have this notebook. This is a Christmas planner. I can't remember where I bought this from. I think it's the sort of thing I picked up in a cheap bookshop. And this has, this has little sections for you to use anyway. You've got a Christmas card list. While well as having the Christmas card people list, I've also used some of the space to make notes about Christmas cards. I mean, again, it's a shame. Some of these things aren't relevant anymore. Like 
don't forget cards and possibly presents for club teachers and make sure the kids take them on the last days that's for things like when the kids were doing ballet drama swimming or whatever i always i always used to forget cards and presents for those teachers because it would surprise me that it was the last day of term you know so then I've got all my notes that are relevant every year that relate to gifts, such as be vigilant with receipts. They're always needed, duplicate presents, bought the wrong thing, broken when unwrapped, etc. It's just like little notes like that to remember. Make notes of any batteries I need to get before wrapping up the present. <laughs> Buy chocolate money early as it always sells out. Little notes like that, I've been gathering this over years. So actually when I bought this notebook, I went through all my old Christmas notebooks and copied the things into this one. So everything that's relevant every year, I can look at in here. And then at the back, I've got a food section and it's got all of my timings for Christmas day cooking. Things to remember like a fresh goose from Costco costs the same as a frozen one from Sainsbury's and don't do too many vegetables, the kids never eat them. <laughs> Just things to remind me that I obviously got wrong that year. Maybe one day I'll share everything I've written because there's probably there's probably a lot of wise wisdom in here that I've gathered over the years. Uh, try and make time to make mum some pastry for mince pies. Oh, I love looking at these. Anyway, so that's my little share of my Christmas notebooks. Please let me know how you do your Christmas organising. Maybe you can keep it all in your head, but I certainly can't. I love the fact that I've got these records from from over time. I'm sure I've got one that predates 2005 from when the kids were younger. Do use the comment section below to share your tips and tricks for how to get organised for Christmas. It would be lovely to hear how you manage to do it. <laughs> maybe, maybe some of that's helped. So I'll be back tomorrow for a normal vlog. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it and if so please give it a thumbs up and it would be lovely to see you again. If you haven't yet hit that subscribe button please do so and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!